My name's Dale, and welcome to Bar Z. I know you're expecting Stan, but today you get me. This is shop week number 26 or 27. Not really sure, but uh, actually we'll bring Stan in here and let him finish out the show for you. Hey, thanks for that, Dale. And this is, in fact, uh, week update number 26. And for you guys that don't like weekly updates and uh, FaceTime, hit the dislike button. That's the one with the thumb facing down and move along. All right, but let, for all you guys that are gonna stick around, uh, let's keep going. And uh, Dale and I had a really nice visit. We had a pretty good time talking shop, talking about our list of projects, uh, how we prioritize our projects, how we deal with shop ADD. Uh, we, just had a, we just had a really nice visit and got to talk about quite a few things. And Dale's an interesting guy. You know, uh, he, uh, he, he does a, some really nice photography. He does some, uh, his videos, I'm sure you guys have seen over on his channel, uh, that his, his videos are very nicely produced and very nicely edited. And uh, we, had a, we had a really nice visit. Um, he also brought with him one of the coolest camera mounts I've ever seen. He called it a gimbal. Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, this is quite possibly the coolest thing I've ever seen. Check out this gimbal, left, right. Oh my God, I gotta get one of those. That is just too cool <clears throat> for school. And uh, back. So uh, yeah, he's uh, when it comes to camera work and photography and uh, shooting video, uh, Dale's uh, really got it going on. I, I, I'm sure you've noticed your, uh, if you've watched any of his videos, how nicely edited they are and, and the content is so uh, smooth and seamless. So uh, much better than the hack job I do. I get my point across. But he gets his point across style. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Ray Cornelia and Colin over at Comp Edge X. Um, there's their channels right down there. Uh, and I'm going to show you the tools that they made me. Let's cut to that. So those are the tools I use on a daily basis. Uh, the the mill stop uh, was made by Colin at Comp Edge X, and the uh, uh, multi-use hammer is made by Ray Cornelia at Ray's Garage. Um, both can be found on YouTube. I'm going to put the uh, links right down here slowly while I'm still talking. Um, but this is kind of a uh, six-month follow-up. They, they sent me these things about six, eight months ago, and being used on a daily level, I have no issues with either one of them whatsoever. Uh, both tools work flawlessly. Uh, they don't bind up. They're comfortable to use. They're ergonomically correct. Um, go check these guys' channel out. Um, if you're interested in these things, they can be contacted, uh, and they might they might make you one. Uh, Colin's been known to sell a millwise stop or two, and I think Ray uh, could probably be coaxed into building you a hammer when properly motivated. All right, uh, next up, I was putting some, uh, I put some taps together. Mike Dittman was trying to get some uh, taps put together and I went through my stash. Uh, I was in the beginnings of rebuilding my collection. Uh, James Green uh, really boosted my collection and gave me a lot of, it, I, it made me end up with a lot of doubles. So, uh, and Mike Dittman was uh, starting to build a collection. So I, uh, I started weeding through my uh, my taps, and this is what I, I'm putting together for Mike Dittman. And so, Mike, you got those coming uh, here pretty quick. I, I'm due for a road trip here in the in the near future, and uh, I'm going to bring those up to you. And uh, I'm going to visit Chuck Vanetta over at Knoll Top and uh, visit with you, Mike, and uh, see if there's anything else up in the in Central California I need to do. Try to kill as many birds with one stone as I can. Uh, next up, uh, my buddy Brad Jacob, he, he put a new coupling in his uh, surface grinder and I guess he had to order two couplings, but he sent me one of them, which is really cool because mine is 
being held together with spit and bailing wire right now and my coupling's making all kinds of noise and you can actually feel the if you grab a hold of the motor shaft and the grinder wheel at one end you can feel the play in there so the coupling is just trashed and uh but uh got a nice little urethane coupler there it is a love joy Okay, so stay tuned. I might even do a video on that. Or I might just throw it in and get it done. I don't know. But Brad, thanks. Oh, here's his channel. Um, next up, uh, I was doing some uh, PM, preventive maintenance, on the Z-axis Rapid I've got on my mill. And I built this over a year ago. And uh, it's a repurposed uh, gassed gear reduction air motor, one-third horsepower. Uh, I took a few uh, photographs. And uh, I shot a little video. So there it is. I, I just gave it a fresh belt. I changed the oil in the gearbox and uh, just kind of freshened it up. It's served me well for the past year. So. Uh, Giving it a $6 belt was no big deal and a, and a very small oil change in the gearbox. Um, it's been a really good rapid. Uh, it, the motor tucks out of the way. It's air powered. Don't have to run cords and stuff to it. So uh, it, it works really well on my, uh, on my knee feed. So uh, I thought you might want to uh, take, a, take a look at that. Uh, next up. Um, I had some door hardware I had to build and it was a very short production run. Usually we cut these out on the plasma, uh, but there was just so few pieces. I, uh, we made it out of some eighth inch, uh, um, eighth inch by four inch flat bar, uh, hot rolled 836 and, um, got to use my little shop made, uh, uh, press for the, uh, for the, um, with a press and it's it's a press brake. It's a hydro, it turns my press into a press brake. So uh, let's go look at the dies and how it uh, how it forms the part. So fast and easy, and if you've got a press, make yourself a set of dies. You know, you never know when you want to bend up a piece of eighth inch, or those dies will actually do quarter inch as well. So uh, pretty, pretty handy to have. And uh, press brake profiles are available online. Google is your friend. Uh, next up, uh, a, another YouTuber, not a poster, but one of the, one of the subs, and uh, he's a local from around here. I'm not going to use his last name, but his name is Greg. Um, he recently acquired. Uh, a gaggle of little drill press vices. Um, I think it was 10 or 12 of these little palm grin vices. Uh, but, and he brought a couple over and I, I bought a couple of them off of him. They were just little sweet vices. They're just little sweetie pies. Uh, no jaws, but I'm gonna make my own jaws for him. Make one with maybe a soft jaw and one with a hard jaw or something. But uh, thanks, Greg, for that. And then uh, here, let's take a look at these uh, these little vices. So nice little vices and uh, handy around the shop. Absolutely, uh, no jaws in them. Um, I'll probably make uh, some little soft jaws for one and maybe some hard jaws for the other. All right, next up, uh, let's talk about scrap pile engineering and dumpster diving. All right, first first thing is some scrap. 
Uh, this was a heater enclosure that came in actually to West Coast Customs that didn't get used. Uh, it was intended to be a 40 inch by 40 inch by 40 inch box with a, one large door, a hinge, and a handle. And it didn't get put in. It was going to get in the way of uh, an electrical panel and, uh, and a gas meter that was already installed. So uh, we did, did not put it in. So we hauled it out of there, and I've been sitting around on the side of the shop in the scrap pile. So uh, let's see what we can make out of that. All right, so that thing turned out to be a shelving unit, 40 by 40 by 12 inches deep, and it now encloses some uh, bin boxes uh, to organize parts. But final material cost, zero. I already had the pop rivets around. The thing's just pop riveted together because I didn't want to ruin the powder coat on it. But uh, made for a really nice wall unit. And uh, thanks for those people that sent the, that heater enclosure that uh, wasn't used. Uh, next up is some, uh, some tops for my uh, workbenches here in the shop. Uh, you probably notice they're right here. Um, and these are, these are really nice Corian, and I did a dumpster dive for these. So uh, if I see people throwing away Corian in long chunks, uh, I'm going to park my truck next to the dumpster and instruct them to put it in my truck instead of the dumpster. I didn't even have to load it. That's a no-brainer. So, uh, yeah, dumpster diving for Corian. Gotta love it. Let's take a look at those. So you probably notice I've got new uh, countertops here in the shop. And this, these were a dumpster dive. But they've been uh, pretty durable. I mean, this is, a, this is an area where I work, uh, you know, frequently right here. And, you know, this is right next to the mill. And, you know, I throw stuff down on there. And, well, even now it's got, it's kind of oily. Uh, just from putting parts and stuff on it and uh, that's where kind of where I deburr you know if I need something clamped in a vise I just throw it in a vise real quick and deburr it right there as I'm working but uh, these countertops have been good I do lay towels down because a lot of times parts will come over from the surface grinder uh, they go to the sink get, you know rinsed and washed off and then they come here and I just lay them on a towel where I can hand dry them and, and clean them up and re-oil them but uh, no, so far I'm pretty happy with the with the Corian. Um, and here again, towel for setting stuff down. Um, but I've got rubber mats like under my D mag. I put a rubber mat there because it it's just, it buzzes very loud uh, when you're deburring parts, and that kind of absorbs it. And I can pass parts across it without them slipping. But uh, pretty happy with that so far. And I'll let you know how those uh, tops hold up. Uh, so far, I'm liking them. They're oil resistant. They wipe down good. They're solvent resistant. I've already spilled lacquer thinner and acetone on them. They just didn't do anything. Um, you know, I've set parts down that had acid on them. Nothing. So, so far, they're, I'm, I'm liking them. Uh, you know, you'll probably notice I got a lot of towels and rubber mats and things like that set down on them because they are a little slick and parts slide around. And if you're working on something and chasing it around on the bench, it kind of sucks. So uh, you'll see a lot of towels and rubber mats around on the, on the benches. But uh, so far I'm liking the Corian. And we'll uh, next more. up we got a uh, quick surface grinder tip <clears throat> for you guys that don't like your stuff flying all around the shop. So uh, let's take a look at uh, how I modified uh, my surface grinder. Here's a little tip for you uh, surface grinder guys. A lot of you guys have some kind of a rubber flap or maybe you want to install a rubber flap on the side of your wheel to stop the stuff from coming out. Well, eventually you'll burn a hole in it. And eventually it'll get really nasty. And all I've done back here is I've, uh, I've uh, tack welded a small piece of sheet metal right there in our gunky, nasty rubber flap with a hole burned in it. Uh, you can get tossed and uh, rubber sheeting available almost anywhere. And we just hold it on with a couple of uh, 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 binder clips. And uh, it just kind of uh, clips on there. Easy to replace if it gets in the way. Sometimes uh, if you're grinding down close it gets in the way. 
and uh, you can remove it very quickly and easily with no tools required. But uh, that's my quick tip of the day. All right. And next up, uh, my sticker collection grows. Okay, so uh, that's it for this week update. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to everyone for watching. And uh, for all you guys that don't uh, like weekly updates, why don't you stick around? Give it a thumbs down. Give, move along your way.